Now, what are the ECG findings in MI? We will discuss. So this is a normal ECG. Here there is a P wave, QRS complex, T wave. In acute MI or when there is a current of injury or minutes afterwards, what are the changes we will get? We will get ST elevation. There is a baseline and there is ST elevation. And hours afterwards, we will get ST elevation along with T depression. And days afterwards, ST will be normal there will be T depression and weeks afterwards T will be normal and there will be pathological Q wave. So these are the changes on ECG. Now localization of MI on ECG. So this diagram is for easily understanding the localization of MI on ECG. Here this one is for V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. So this is the view of the heart from all the leads. Here these are the chest leads. V1 to V6, these are the chest leads and these are the limb leads. Augmented vector right, augmented vector left, 1, 2, augmented vector foot and 3. These are the limb leads. So, you can see that this is the anterior aspect of the heart, this is inferior aspect of the heart and this is lateral aspect of the heart. So, now we can see that V1 to V6, this V1 to V6 reflects the anterior aspect of the heart whole anterior aspect of the heart and this 2 3 abf this reflects the inferior aspect of the heart and this b5 v6 1 and avl this reflects the lateral aspects of the heart and this v3 and v4 reflects the septum v3 and v4 reflects the interventricular septum so now if we get those ECG changes like ST elevation, T depression or uh, pathological Q wave, if we get those ECG changes in V1 to V6, then we can tell this is anterior MI or extensive anterior MI. 
so in anterior mi we will get ecg changes in v1 to v6 and then inferior mi as 2 3 abf reflects the inferior aspect of the heart so if we get any changes in 2 3 8 abf we can say this is inferior mi so inferior mi 2 3 abf then lateral mi as b5 b6 1 and avl reflects the lateral aspect of the heart so if we get any changes in those leads we can say this is lateral mi so for lateral mi v5 v6 1 avl and then anteroceptal mi anteroceptal mi as v3 and v4 reflects the septum so v1 to v4 if we get any changes in v1 to v4 then we can say it is anteroceptal mi so v1 to v4 and then anterolateral mi anterior plus lateral aspect anterior plus lateral aspects so for anterior v1 to v6 and we will get changes in 1 and avl 1 avl so if we get ecg changes in v1 to v6 we can tell this is anterior mi if you get ecg change in 2 3 abf we can say this is inferior mi if you get ecg change in b5 v6 1 and avl we can say this is lateral mi v1 to v4 anteroceptal v1 v1 to v6 1 avl we can say anterolateral mi so these are the localization of mi on ecg now the treatment of mi So now the treatment of MI. Initial measures, we have to do immediate hospitalization, then high flow oxygen, IV access with blood for biochemical markers, then ECG monitoring, then pharmacological therapy, antiplatelet therapy, aspirin and clopidogrel, aspirin 300 milligram and clopidogrel 300 milligram, stat dose, and analgesics, IV morphine with antiemetics, and anti anginal therapy like sublingual glycerol trinitrate or beta blocker if there is no contraindication and thrombolytics or anticoagulants if patient comes within 12 hours if it is st elevation mi then we have to do thrombolysis with streptokinase and other options are altiplase or retiplase 
if patient comes after 12 hours that means if there is non ST elevation MI then we can do anticoagulation by low molecular weight heparin that is enoxaparin and C reperfusion therapy that is primary PCA percutaneous coronary intervention or we can do the surgery that is coronary artery bypass grafting so this is all about the treatment of myocardial infarction hope you like this video please give your feedback in the comments below and subscribe this channel for next videos thank you Thank you.